Hey everyone, welcome back to the networking series. Today, we're going to explore a concept that's crucial for connecting local networks to the internet. Network Address Translation, AKA NAT. NAT allows multiple devices on a private network to share a single public IP address when communicating with the outside world. By the end of this video, you'll understand how NAT works, why it's important, and how it impacts your network. Let's get started. So what exactly is NAT? NAT stands for Network Address Translation, and it's a method used by routers to modify the IP addresses and packets as they pass between a private network and the internet. NAT enables multiple devices on a local network to share a single public IP address, which is especially useful given the limited number of available public IP addresses. IPv4. Let's break this down with an example. Imagine you're at home and you have multiple devices, your laptop, your smartphone, a smart TV, all connected to your home network. Each of these devices has its own private IP address assigned by your router. When these devices need to communicate with the internet, they can't use their private IP addresses because those addresses are only valid inside of your local network. This is where NAT comes in. When one of your devices sends data to the internet, your router uses NAT to replace the private IP address with the router's public IP address. From the internet's perspective, it looks like all the data is coming from a single device, your router, rather from all these different devices within your home network. But how does the router know which device should receive the response? That's where the NAT table comes into play. The NAT table is a database that keeps track of each connection. When a device on the local network sends data to the internet, the router adds an entry to the NAT table, associating the private IP address of the device with the public IP address and the port number used for the connection. When the response from the internet comes back, the router checks the NAT table to see which device it should forward the data to based on the port. This process happens automatically and ensures that the data is delivered to the right device on your local network. There are a few different types of NAT, but the most common is PAT or port address translation. PAT is a type of overloading NAT where the router assigns a different port number for each connection. This allows multiple devices to share that same public IP address while keeping their connections separate. PAT is what's typically used in home networks. Let's take a closer look at the different types of NAT. Static NAT is the simplest type. In static NAT, there's a one-to-one -one mapping between a private IP address and a public IP address. This is often used when you want a device on your local network, like a server, to always be accessible from the internet using the same public IP address every time. Next is dynamic NAT. In dynamic NAT, the router uses a pool of public IP addresses. When a device on the local network needs to communicate with the internet, the router temporarily assigns one of the available public IP addresses from the pool. Once the communication is finished, the public IP address is returned to the pool and can be used by another device. Finally, there's port address translation or PAT, which we mentioned earlier. PAT allows multiple devices to share the same public IP address by assigning different port numbers to each connection. This is by far the most common type of NAT and is used in most home and office networks. Why is NAT so important? One of the main reasons is that it helps conserve the limited number of public IPv4 addresses. The IPv4 address space is running out and NAT allows us to extend the life of IPv4 by enabling multiple devices to share a single public IP address. NAT also adds an extra layer of security since devices on your local network are using private IP addresses, they're not directly accessible from the internet. This makes it more difficult for external attackers to target individual devices on your local network. However, NAT does have some drawbacks. For instance, NAT can sometimes cause issues with applications that rely on end-to-end -end connectivity, such as certain online games or VoIP services. 
These applications expect the devices to be reachable by their public IP addresses, but NAT can interfere with that process at times. To address these issues, there's a technique called NAT traversal. NAT traversal methods like UPnP, Universal Plug and Play, or STUN, Session Traversal Utilities for NAT, help applications establish connections through NAT by automatically configuring the router to allow the necessary traffic. Another important consideration is NAT with IPv6. With IPv6, there are enough addresses to give every device on the internet a unique IP address, which eliminates the need for NAT. As IPv6 grows in adoption, NAT will become less common. However, many networks today still use IPv4, so understanding NAT remains critical. So to recap, network address translation or NAT is a method used by routers to modify IP addresses in packets as they pass between a private network and the internet. Static NAT provides a one-to-one -one mapping of IP addresses, while dynamic NAT uses a pool of addresses, and PAT allows multiple devices to share a single IP address by assigning a different port number. NAT helps conserve public IPv4 addresses and adds a layer of security, but it can sometimes cause issues with certain applications. In the next video, we'll be covering DHCP, which automates the process of assigning IP addresses to devices on your network. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video. Take care.